Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. So our second lecture will be on ecology, principles of ecology and various levels of ecological organizations. So first, ecology is derived from two Greek words that is oikos and logi, right? Oikos means home and logi means study. Here home is nothing but our environment. So in ecology we study about environment, organisms present in the environment and the relationship between such organisms. So what is ecology? It is a branch of biology obviously concerned with the relationship of organisms to one another and their physical surroundings. So moving on to the level of organization. Here, there are various levels of organization such as individual, population, community, ecosystem and biosphere. Let us discuss one by one. First, what is an individual? An individual is a single organism that can act and function independently. For example, here this is a fish. It can swim freely. It can eat on its own. So such an organism that can act and function independently is called as individual. Individual is nothing but a single organism. So a group of such individuals. More specifically interbreeding individuals. That is um, what is interbreeding? A male and a female together capable of producing an offspring is called as interbreeding here in a population the two individuals are capable of interbreeding so such a pop uh, such a, a group of individual is called as population so there will be increase and decrease in the population as we all know an increase in population happens due to birth that is an addition of a new offspring and due to immigration immigration is nothing but when an organism moves from a different locality to another locality the population of the organism in the second locality will obviously increase right this is called as immigration and again population will decrease in case of death of a particular organism in a locality and due to emigration emigration is nothing but moving out of an organism from a particular locality leads to the decrease in the number of individual in the first locality like we take two lakes here lake one and lake two let us consider the lake, the lake one consists of two fishes just assume and lake two consists of three fishes so if a fish from here moves here to lake two the population of the lake two will increase right so what happened here the population of lake 2 increased due to immigration of a big fish from lake 1 likewise the population of lake 1 decreased due to immigration of fish from the lake 1 hope it's clear moving on to the next level of organization community a community is a group of organism but it is a group of different organisms like we can find a shrimp here a bigger fish a smaller fish together everything constitutes a community such a group of different organism is called as community so a community is named after the dominant plant form that is let us take the example of a grassland right just because the name is grassland it doesn't mean that the land consists of only grasses right it can it may consist of a tree it may consist of shrubs right but it is named a grassland just because it is dominated by grasses that is it has a higher number of grasses when compared to other plant plant forms that is how a community is named right it is named after a dominant plant form so a community can be divided into major community and minor community a major community is something that is large and independent for example let us take the tropical evergreen forest a tropical evergreen forest is large and it is not dependent on any neighboring community right 
so such a community uh, community which is large and independent is called as majority community so what is a minority community now let us take an example of a lichen that is grown on a dung pad okay the lichen community cannot survive on its own rather it depend on the dung pad for its survival so such a community which is small and it is dependent on the neighboring community to survive is called as minor community so next moving on to another important topic that is niche right what is a niche a unique functional role or the position of a species in its habitat or ecosystem that is where an organism lives what food it eats how it reproduces what are the abiotic factors what are the optimistic level of abiotic factors that are required for an organism to live these together constitute the niche based on this niche is classified as habitat niche food niche reproductive niche physical and chemical niche habitat niche is nothing but it is a place where an organism lives food niche is nothing but what food it eats right and reproductive niche is how and when it reproduces and physical and chemical niche is again the optimum temperature the land slope or the place like uh, what are the requirements for the survival of a particular organism right then what is the difference between niche and the habitat as we saw earlier habitat is nothing but an address of an organism niche is nothing but a lifestyle of an organism as we saw what it eats where it lives how and when it reproduces everything pertains to the lifestyle of a particular organism another major difference between a habitat and a niche is that niche is unique to a particular species unlike habitat which is which could be common for many species so one important thing to remember is every or organism have its own unique niche no two organism can have a common niche that is, this is very very important to remember okay right moving on to the next level of organization that is biosphere going by its name bio plus sphere which means the part of earth that is occupied by the living organism is called as biosphere right the biosphere includes lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere lithosphere is nothing but that part of earth that is occupied by land or rocks and atmosphere nothing but that part of earth that is covered with air and hydrosphere is nothing but that part of earth that is covered with water so biosphere includes all these right now you people may get a question is there a place where living organisms is totally absent yes of course for example in the north pole in the south pole in the deeper oceans and highest mountains where there are extremes of climate the biosphere is absent so once again reiterating biosphere is that part of earth that is occupied by the living organisms so moving on to the next important concept that is ecotone what is a ecotone ecotone is nothing but the transitional zone between two different ecosystem for example here see this is the ecotone region and it is a transitional zone between the land zone and the aquatic zone so this ecotone region have specific characteristics like it have higher number of species when compared to the adjacent two ecosystem and obviously if there is a higher number of species there will be increased productivity in the ecotone region when compared to any other natural ecosystem in the world right so what is a ecosystem ecotone ecotone is nothing but a transitional zone between two different ecosystem so uh, let me give you people an example of ecosystem hmm example a grassland okay a grassland is a ecotone region that is present between 
forest and a desert right it is not the case the forest ends here and a desert starts here no this won't happen first the forest will reduce into grasses and then becomes completely empty that is a desert so this transitional zone between a forest and a desert that is a grassland is an example of ecosystem region sorry ecotone region so here is the definition an eco ecotone is a zone a zone of junction or a transition area between two biomes it is the zone where two communities meet and integrate for example a mangrove forest again here mangrove forest is a ecotone between marine and terrestrial ecosystems so another most important topic that could be dealt here is ecocline ecotone is more or less similar to ecocline is more or less similar to ecotone one different is that unlike ecotone in a ecocline there will be gradual and continuous changes almost unidentifiable change happens in the ecocline region while uh, the change is very clear and it is obvious in the ecotone region so this is the difference between ecotone and ecocline that is ecocline in an ecocline there will be gradual continuous changes it is almost undetectable and in the ecotone region there will be a change which is more obvious than the ecocline so moving on to another concept edge effect as we all see when compared to the adjacent ecosystems there will be change in population so to be more specific there will be increase in population in the ecotone which is called as edge effect and the species that is in a larger number in the ecotone is called as edge species for example in an ecotone between forest and desert there will be higher amount of birds so here the birds are the edge species so edge species is nothing but the species that is in larger number in the ecotone region moving on to another most important topic that is the principles of ecology here we will discuss some principles right first one is adaptation what is adaptation adaptation is nothing but a change right the change may be in the appearance of an organism it may be behavioral it may be structural and it may be in the mode of life but why this change happens to facilitate the organism to survive in a particular environment so what is adaptation it is a change which may be apparent in the appearance or may be a behavioral change or a structural change which happens in an organism in order to allow it to survive in a particular environment there are different types of adaptation like the morphological adaptation for example as you see plants in the desert have their leaves reduced to spines why because deserts will have high temperature so in order to avoid the transpiration loss and to facilitate the plants to live longer and avoid drought or wilting the leaves of the plants are reduced to spines second one is allen's rule allen's rule is nothing but the mammals in the colder regions right like uh, like in the poles have shorter ears and limbs why they have short ears and limbs in order to reduce the loss of heat right so this is again an adaptation to survive the colder climate another one example is uh, another one type of adaptation is physiological adaptation that is for example if we climb a mountain we'll find uh, find it difficult to breathe right this is due to the uh, reduction in the levels of oxygen there so but uh, if we stay in the mountain for a longer period of time our body will get acclimatized that is adapted to the lower levels of oxygen so such adaptation is called as physiological adaptation so here a question arises how our body adapts so in the place when we stay in a place where there is a low amount of oxygen for longer period of time our body tend to produce more rbc which will compensate the reduced amount of oxygen so another example is the behavioral change so here i introduce to you two different terms hibernation and aestivation hibernation is winter sleep and aestivation summer sleep you might have uh, might have heard of uh, organisms that are go into deep uh, go into deep sleep in a particular season 
right in order to avoid the extremes of the uh, particular season so such a uh, changes is called as behavioral change when an organism enters into deep sleep in the winter climate it is called as hibernation and when it enters into deep sleep uh, during summer season it is called as aestivation okay next important principle of ecology is variation variation is again a change but the change happens in the genetic makeup okay the the change may be due to addition or deletion of a specific gene in an organism it may be due to mutation mutation in, uh, in detail will be discussed in the coming slides so it may be due to changes in climate or geographical barriers right so these are the reasons why variations occur for uh, examples of variation is that different ethnic groups have different skin color hair color etc for example we people in india have a darker skin tone but people in europe have a lighter skin tone okay such uh, variations okay such uh, differences in color or other example of variations another uh, important uh, principle is speciation what is a species species are a group of organism that look alike and they share closely related characteristics right they are called as species so let us discuss what is speciation so let us consider a species living in this area right a group of organisms species living in this area so now a geographical barrier occurs here okay so here the species is divided into two different subpopulation right this is one subpopulation and this is one subpopulation with time these two population become so different that they could no longer interbreed which means they could no longer mate and produce an offspring so such a change in the genetic makeup of an organism which make them two different species is called as speciation one example is an example of galapagos finch and the process that leads to speciation is called as adaptive radiation so speciation happens due to adaptive radiation where an organism diversify from the ancestral species into many new forms so the example galapagos finch here um galapagos finches are living in different islands right in the galapagos archipelago different species of finches are living in different islands and they have different beaks like this one based on the food they eat but they all came from a common ancestor but since they are separated by ocean in between the finches residing in different islands of the galapagos archipelago have different beaks and they had differentiated into different species for example uh, the beak uh, of a uh, finch that eats seeds look like this and uh, this beak is uh, facilitate uh, this beak facilitate the finch to eat cactus and this beak facilitate the finches to eat the insects though these three finches came from a common ancestor now due to geographical barrier they now separated into three different species such a process is called as speciation so coming to the next important topic that is mutation mutation is nothing but a change in the genetic material but it is due to a error Okay, it is due to the error in the DNA replication. So, for example, sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a disease where the shape of the RBC. RBC is usually spherical in shape. The shape of the RBC turns into a sickle shape, right? When the RBC turns into sickle shape, it becomes difficult for the blood to flow since they stuck in the blood vessels, right? This reduces the oxygen flow to different parts of the body. Such a disease is called a sickle cell anemia, and this sickle cell anemia is caused due to mutation. And what are the reasons for mutation? Mutation may be due to exposure to radiation, exposure to hazardous chemicals, and there are various other reasons that leads to mutation. but uh, the mutation process should not be confused with meiosis and fertilization so meiosis and fertilization are a normal process while mutation is a error 
right? Meiosis and fertilization are normal process that produce new combination of genes every generation. So what is the after effect of meiosis? Meiosis leads to variation in the species. For example, not every human being looks the same. Everyone have their own characteristics and everyone are different from one another, right? This is due to meiosis and fertilization. So such variation in the similar species is caused by meiosis and fertilization. We are almost heading towards the end. So a few more minutes, right? Next important topic is natural selection. So natural selection is the mechanism proposed by Darwin and Wallace. So natural selection is the process by which a particular characteristics of a species, okay? A particular characteristics of a species is selected naturally and it is reproduced again and again to that extent that particular characteristics became the normal characteristics and all other become a recessive characteristics in a particular population. For example, peacocks. In peacocks, Peahens prefer peacocks with brighter plumage for mating. Okay, this resulted in the peacocks with brighter plumage getting involved in mating process a lot. So as a result, more number of peacocks with brighter plumage will, will be reproduced a lot, which result in the reduction in the number of uh, peacocks with a quite duller plumage, right? So here the brighter uh, the peacocks with brighter plumage are chosen naturally and the most desirable character that is the brighter plumage is naturally selected and it re and it is reinforced again and again so let us see the definition it is a process by which species adapt to their environment right so it is a evolutionary force that select among variation that is genes that, that help the organism to better adapt to its environment such genes are reproduced see such genes are more reproduced in a population due to natural selection here here the challenge posed by the environment to the peacock is having a brighter plumage peacocks without a brighter plumage are almost rejected right they are rejected from the mating process so, in order to cope up with this challenge posed by the environment, naturally, the brighter plumage as a process of natural selection, the peacocks with brighter plumage are reproduced again and again. So, this is called as natural selection and evolution. We all know about evolution. It is proposed by Charles Darwin. Uh, Darwin. It is the uh, process that uh, gives rise to the new species as we, uh, as it is commonly said, the evolution of a human being from the monkeys, right? So it involves various other process like uh, evolution may be due to natural selection, it may be due to adaptation, etc. I don't think we need to dwell much deeper into evolution. So next is extinction. Extinction is nothing but a destruction, right? What is the reason of reason for destruction of an organism this it may be due to an environmental change or may be due to competition competition for same resources competition for same habitat right it leads to extinction so um, if two species compete for a same habitat the more stronger species will survive and the weaker species will get eliminated that is extincted right so such a process where the species that cannot evolve fast enough to cope with the environment goes extinct is called as extinction. So currently we are facing the sixth mass extinction. It is due to anthropo. It is called as anthropogenic extinction. That is, it is a human induced in extinction. We are uh, using our resources um, not sustainably, right? We are using our resources unsustainably we are over distracting our resources which le which is leading to this sixth mass extinction so that's all for today let's discuss two pyqs here okay which of the following are true the presence of specific features or certain habits which enable a plant or an animal to live in its surrounding is called as evolution no it is not Habitat where an organism 
sorry the surroundings where an organism lives is called its habitat yes small changes that takes place in the body of an organism over a shorter period to overcome small problems due to changes in the surrounding called as acclimatization acclimatization is nothing but adaptation this is also right so gradual changes in an organism to survive in an environment is called adaptation no here these two statements are interchanged gradual changes in an environment that happens to survive in uh, changes in an organism to survive in an environment is called as evolution and the presence of specific features or certain habitat habits which enable a plant or animal to live in its surrounding is called as adaptation so here 2 and 3 are alone true so the correct answer is b here third term second sixth mass extinction is often mentioned in the news in the context of what as we all see sixth mass extinction is anthropogenic extinction or human induced extinction so here widespread monocultural practices in agriculture no fear of possible collision of a meteorite no large scale cultivation of genetically modified crops no mankind's over exploitation misuse of natural resources this is the apt one you guys may be confused with the options a and c but always try to find more most similar answer like most appropriate you, you should choose the most appropriate answer right so most appropriate answer here is d so this is all for today thank you for watching the lectures and our next video will be on functions of ecosystem till then stay tuned do share like share and subscribe